welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara Breen. Joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Joe Caulfield and Russell Howard, Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis and Mark Watson. Our first round is called Headliners. Here's a picture of America's former and possibly future first couple, Bill and Hillary Clinton. But what does BCAH stand for? Just a, just a very wild guess. Is it Bill Clinton and Hillary? <laughs> It'd be terrible. Imagine if you got it the first time. <laughs> Bill clocks available hookers. <laughs> Bill cigars always humid. <laughs> I've got a slightly different one. I prefer clammy. Is it? <laughs> Bill controls Android Hillary. Look at him, he's angry. <laughs> it, looks like, it looks like he's pointing her out to a sniper. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, is, it, is that what yeah. it is? Bill, Bill considers assassinating Hillary. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'll give. I'll give. I'll give well, if we could possibly steer it. Oh no, the answer. Right, right, you're you going to go for uh, Bill campaigns alongside Hillary. Ooh. That's exactly oh, right. Well done, well done. <laughs> the answer I was looking for was Bill campaigns alongside Hillary. That refers to the former president's increasingly high-profile role in his wife's bid for the Democratic presidential nomination. Hillary is currently ahead of her Democratic rivals, but in a recent poll, 49% of Americans said they looked on her unfavorably. <laughs> it's rather unusual language. I follow yeah. I look on you unfavorably. <laughs> I'm looking forward to her becoming president and getting the file that they keep on Bill Clinton. <laughs> Find out all the stuff he did when he was present. Bill, you screwed a robot woman? <laughs> the Chinese sent a robot spy and you humped it to death, Bill. <laughs> if you were Hillary and you were married to the single most charismatic politician of, the, of our generation, right, would you campaign with him? Would it not just make you look like, would it not be like always campaigning with a puppy? That whenever you put the puppy away, you always go, no, oh. bring back the puppy. Uh, <laughs> I like the puppy. No, not at all, because after, after this speech, they, they spend an hour working the crowd to the tunes of Simply the Best by Tina Turner. Which sounds really seedy, doesn't it? I've got the idea of them bogling. Yeah, you're seeing moves, you. aren't you? Because yeah. we wouldn't do that in this country, just Gordon Brown, those are my policies, hit it, DJ. <laughs> they call me Mr. Bombastic, <laughs> and just <laughs> strutting around the room. Was it an hour? It was that, an is, hour. that is a long version of simple. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just over and over. Just yeah. whipping Tina Turner. One more time. <laughs> I'm 83. Sing it, Tina. Yeah. <laughs> Also, what, what's yeah. the thing about two L's in Hillary? I, it, it's, I was thinking that. Two what? Two L, spelling Hillary with two L's. No, it's but... It's so Edmund I, Hillary, yeah, the but, conqueror of Everest, spelled it in exactly the same way, Mark. <clears throat> that was a surname, Hugh. OK, that's true. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> that was the most middle-class rat battle I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. What's up with the two L's in yes. Hillary? Well, I think you'll find that... Uh, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> They're just never satisfied, are they? He's been president, she's going to be president, they've got Clinton cards as well. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I think what's yeah. scary is if, if she does, then it makes you think that Cherie Blair might go, oh, I like what they've done, he got it, and now I can get it. It's not it. like getting a basement conversion. Uh, <laughs> I think it is to these people. Like, would they be at a dinner party and they'll go, so what are you up to? Well, actually, I'm now the president. Really? And then yeah. she's nagging Tony in the taxi home, going, why aren't I? Why aren't I? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's that if she awful. gets to do it, why shouldn't I get to do it? Exactly. Really Clinton's been out of the White House for eight years. I wouldn't like to be the first intern that comes across him after yeah. eight years. I think that they should dress a haunch of lamb up in a, a skirt, <laughs> just, just so that he gets half his energy out of the way before he actually meets anyone human. What does George Bush intend to do after the election? He said he's going to make his living by speaking. Yeah. When he retires. Yeah. yeah, play to your strengths, George. <laughs> that's, that's like Abu Hamza pursuing a career as a shadow puppeteer. <laughs> I was very pleased because I assumed that after he left the presidency, the only public appearances he'd be making would be about four o'clock every day when the keeper came to give him bananas. <laughs> the, um, he, where was he this week, Bush? He uh, went to see the troops in Iraq. He did indeed. Eh? He went on a surprise visit to Iraq. Which is hardly going to be morale boosting, is it? It's like having a pie at an old folks' home and having the guest of honour as Harold Chipman. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Oh, it's like, oh, it's him, the reason why we're here. 
Why is there, why, what's the big news with the British troops in Iraq? Oh, we've, uh, we're out. Well, we've left Basra Palace and we're now at the airport. But we, yes. yeah, we, no, we're not, lost, it's so you, nothing, isn't it? We're, we're not retreating now, are we? No, nope, we haven't no. lost. No. Nope. We, I mean, we, okay, we pulled out to the airport. Yeah, but we're not retreating. Okay, we've checked our baggage in, but we're not retreating. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, the plane's on the tarmac, but we're not leaving that country. But ladies, <laughs> it's a victory, it's though, isn't it? It's been billed as a victory, and it was actually such a fantastic victory that we had to leave under cover of darkness <laughs> to avoid the massive leaving party <laughs> that the Iraqis had planned for us. You know, we didn't want the fuss, the balloons, the ticker tape, so we thought, let's get into our jeeps and leave at 100 miles an hour in the middle of the night, clearing a path with machine gun fire. But we made you a cake. Actually, it was a bomb. But, uh, <laughs> Did you hear how they left, though? They left, apparently, with a bugler yeah. at 1 a.m., led by a bugler. No wonder the British forces aren't regarded as, you know, everybody's best mate is when they decide to leave. Oh, I tell you what, we're leaving now. It's 1 a.m. Bugler. That'll make everybody happy. There's another got got also bugler, the bugler, a bugler on the front of a jeep going at 100 miles an hour is bugler yeah. plus Doppler effect. <laughs> but also, they're in a city where everyone wants to shoot them, and some poor sod, right, play your bugle. Hey. <laughs> play it really loud so they'll know us. Oh, what I do request is I predict a riot. No, no, no. <laughs> That's a tricky job, isn't it? Can I not just power it down? What animal uh, has been causing problems for the British troops? Badgers. Badgers. <laughs> Correct. It's the first time Ross has said badgers on this show and they've been the right answer. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. Why, why badgers? The Basra badger, apparently. The, the people of Iraq thought that we'd release badgers uh, into Iraq, but we haven't. And the description was fantastic. A lady said that she saw this thing in the dead of night. It was as swift as a deer. It was the size of a monkey and the face of a dog. And you're like, <laughs> flipping out, someone's high. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but as if we would have thought, oh, well, we're a bit short of troops. Maybe yeah, yeah. we can recruit a few honey badgers. <laughs> just airdropping frogs and toads and otters. Get them, lads. Any kind of, just everything. And in the middle of it all, Bill Oddie just dropped <laughs> it. <in. laughs> They'd accidentally <laughs> scooped <laughs> Bill Oddie up in, in the big wildlife net. <laughs> <laughs> and Oddie, desperately, how do you know wildlife now, Oddie? Ah! Frog in his ear. Let's be honest, though, Oddie couldn't survive for more than a day in the wild. For all his boasting and posturing, <laughs> I could imagine him starving to death in a travel lodge. <laughs> So you, you won't have to imagine. You think he'd just be picking up hedgehogs and trying to dial room service on the hedgehog. <laughs> that would be brilliant. I find it a bit embarrassing that in Iraq this is regarded as a dangerous weapon, yet we still haven't been able to win this war. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, though, in, in Iraq, you know, because it's safe now that we've, you know, we've sorted everything out, it's actually a fantastic time to pick up property there. <laughs> if you want to buy a, a two-bedroom flat in Basra, it's apparently about eight pence at the minute. <laughs> Although insurance can be about four grand a month. By the way, he was referred to earlier on, uh, that is a honey badger, uh, which is the type of badger you get, uh, which does sound like some sort of sexual euphemism in a kind of a, you know, Terry, oh, I was a bit of a honey badger myself back in the day. <laughs> yeah. All my friends called me that. It's a close relation to the poon hound. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he, does look, he looks more like an otter <laughs> who's been in the middle of a road when somebody's been along doing the white march, no, no, doesn't no. he? He looks like the animal who Pepe Le Pew falls in love with mistakenly. Right. Oh, my dear, you are a beautiful skunk. I'm a skunk, I'm a honey badger. And the cartoon goes on for five minutes. Right <laughs> if Iraqis, Iraqis apparently were terrified of these badgers, which suggests that we've gone overboard in torturing them. <laughs> Please, not the petting zoo, not again! <laughs> the tiny pot-bellied goats, no! I can tell you everything! It, it became so widespread as a rumour that... It was, because it was supposed to be man-eating bears that, we, that, that the British Army had released. Yeah. And the, the British Army officer categorically stated that we have not released man-eating badgers <laughs> into the area. With, with the weary tone of a man who's sick of having to tell you <laughs> that we have not released them. And while I'm here, oh. no, there are no unicorns with poison tips ridden by mermaids. There is no army of orcs. We have not released a griffin into the Basra area. They actually said that these things were the size of dogs but had the heads of monkeys. I think... They were monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> but what because, didn't uh, one attack a lady in the dead of night? That's clearly like her husband just being a bit frisky. What happened there? Oh, I was a bloody badger. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All over here was I tried to defend yeah. you. Shall we? <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, at the end of that round, ladies and gentlemen, the points go to Russell, Joe and Andy! Our next round is called Newsreel. We play in a recent piece of footage featuring people in the news and ask you to suggest what they might be saying. This week's clip features the Prince of Wales and the Duchess of Cornwall. Ah, oh, well, here he is, His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales and, uh, and Mrs. Prince of Wales. Well, why are they here? Well, to overlook the building of their new house. It's a bit behind schedule, I'm afraid. It was due to be finished in the Renaissance. <laughs> but, uh, never mind, in the interim, they've discovered electricity, so that's... <laughs> It's an added bonus. Look at that light bulb, darling, shining its lovely light on your lovely face. <laughs> Prince Charles doesn't like this very much, doesn't like an overrun. Now, which of you is responsible for the overrun, he's asking. I don't care if you're Polish. One of you <laughs> will be beheaded. Now, are you responsible for the overrun? Was it you? Are you responsible for the overrun? No, Your Highness. We're not responsible for the overrun. We're just getting on with the job you gave us. We're bricking in your relatives. <laughs> Why haven't you finished it? You're meant to be doing it. Why aren't you doing it now? Well, Your Royal Highness, we would be doing it now if you weren't talking to us, so... <laughs> if you shut up, we'll be able to get on with it, and it won't take nearly as long, so just go away. Now, let me pop on my specs. Have a look at this enormous microphone. Tonight, Matthew, I'm going to be Whitney Houston. <laughs> oh, no, turns out to be a stone hammer. Prince Charles, of course, terribly good at hammering stone. He's carved and recarved his own mother's gravestone many times over the years. <laughs> Prince Charles getting rid of some graffiti there. Wills for king. No, no, you don't go like that, Your Highness. You need longer, manly strokes like that. And a bit of a chamfer. Oh, manly strokes, is it? Yes, I'm laughing now, but you can fuck off. I'm the Prince of Wales. <laughs> well done, you. Our next round is called It's Only Mock and Droll, But I Like It. This game involves Mark, Andy, Frankie and Russell, so if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This is where we test our performance stand-up skills, we spin our news generator and it settles on a topic and anyone can volunteer jokes about the chosen subject. OK, here we go, let's spin the wheel. The first subject is advertising. Who wants to come in? Mark. Uh, I just think aggressive advertising has gone too far. It actually has the opposite effect for me. I saw a trailer for a film, Them, it was called Them. Um, so, I know it's a silly name. What do you mean, them? That's just anyone apart from me. For a start, I'll <laughs> you know, narrow it down a bit. But it said um, on this trailer, you'll never feel safe in your home again. I think, OK, I won't go and see that then, thank you. <laughs> Who needs to pay £12 for that? Yeah, how was the film? Brilliant. We've had to move out, though, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> It drives me mad. After a while, you just think, can't people just calm down a bit? But it's, in London, nearly everything is cleverly marketed, even toilets. In London, you never just get toilets that say men, women. There's always a theme, like, you know, bucks and does. I think, I don't know the answer. <laughs> I, I'm drunk, where do I piss? Let's just cut to the chase, shall we? Yeah. Yeah. I was in London, in this pub, the toilet said XX and XY, like chromosomes. <laughs> I, mean, I know, I didn't realise I have to revise for this wee. <laughs> I would have done different A-levels if I realised it would restrict my pissing in the future. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mark. <laughs> OK, let's spin the wheel again. The subject is charity. Who wants to come in on that? Russell. It's, um... Cheer if anyone's ever given clothes to Oxfam. Fair enough. <laughs> you whoop then. Woo, do we win a prize? No. Um, it's a really odd feeling because you feel quite proud of yourself. Just one, where am I going? I'm off to save Africa. That's right. And you wander in, you just plop down your clothes. Always some lovely lady. Bung it anywhere. And there's a tiny part of you that gets really annoyed. You almost want to go, right! Well, we'll do that again, shall we? <laughs> and this time you're going to act like you give a shit. <laughs> it sounds bad, but there's a tiny part of you that wants her to go, sire! He brings goods! <laughs> the chosen one has arrived! <laughs> and she fling pants at orphans! <laughs> Yippee, hurrah! Will you ever be back in time, you needy tinkers? But that's a That's an hour. <laughs> OK, we're left with Frankie and Andy. Let's spin the wheel again. The next topic is Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Scotland's full of terrible places. The pride of Kilmarnock took a bit of a knock recently when they found out that the people of Ethiopia were holding a rock concert for them. <laughs> Apparently, Sean Connery said that if we get independence, he's going to come back. Brilliant, we can live off his income tax like it was a newly discovered oil field. <laughs> 
my favourite Scottish thing ever. I was on a train from Glasgow to London the day after September the 11th happened. September the 12th, I think you'll find it. <laughs> <laughs> and all these pissed Scottish women got on. There's a guy sat across from me, a Sikh, with a turban on. And one of them goes, Oh, you! I hope you're not going to hijack this train. <laughs> Some of us are waiting to get home tonight. <laughs> What are the hijackers going to do at a train? Crash it into the buffers at Glasgow Central. <laughs> yes, we've taken down the World Trade Centre next. It's cost a coffee in the sock shop. <laughs> OK, let's see what Andy has left. Let's spin the wheel. And it's crime. Now, New Labour, they're always telling us, aren't they, all crime has come down under New Labour. But violent crime has, in fact, gone up. And I don't know about you, but violent crime, that's the one I'm scared of. <laughs> Fear of crime is always much greater than crime itself, right? Apparently, on average, in Britain, 1,000 people get murdered each year, yeah? But apparently, 6,000 people each year in Britain commit suicide. So if you ever think there's somebody behind you, right, you know, you're a bit scared, feel free to turn round at them and go, Yeah! Well, you don't scare me! I'm six times more likely to do harm to myself than you are! <laughs> <laughs> well, leave me well alone. Well, you're Andy Barton. Point that round. Go to Andy and Russell. The next round is called, if this is the answer, what is the question on the board of six categories? Mark, which category would you like? Uh, science. OK, your category is science. The answer is 2025. What is the question? Is it, um, when will the stadium for the 2012 Olympics be ready? <laughs> is it, what year will black people and white people finally live side by side in harmony in Chinese concentration camps? <laughs> Is it, what is my pin number? <laughs> yes, it is, it is. Is it, my dad took a dump in my toilet the other week. <laughs> when will it be safe to go back in there? <laughs> well, uh, how many times is the word umbrella repeated in that bloody song? <laughs> what year will cities gain sentience and raise themselves on hydraulic legs <laughs> to begin the long battle for resources? <laughs> Vision of the future is, is, there any, is there any vision of the future you have which involves living in peace and harmony, having transcended war? Oh, I've just noticed we're on a dying fucking planet, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just me. What do you mean it's not just you? <laughs> Anyone who's played, pay, played co close attention to how the world's going will know that environmentally you should reuse your plastic bags to suffocate your children. <laughs> <laughs> Is it, Frank, he, is no a, he is a father. He is a father. Yeah. <laughs> it's no surprise the show yeah. isn't repeated during CBBC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's got to be the year, isn't it? Is it, yeah, is it, it something is the year. to do yeah, with year cities on hydraulic legs? It's nothing to do with cities on hydraulic legs. Are you sure? There will, no, 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 with the cities on hydraulic legs. Is it, in what year can I book a scuba diving tour of Holland? <laughs> That's assuming it hasn't risen up on its own legs and pushed it. <laughs> Where's Holland? Frankie, you should know. It's Holland's <laughs> not a city. <laughs> in the year it's it's 2025, it'll be it the only be, city yeah. left in mainland Europia. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the giant war against the ocean countries. Uh, <laughs> etc, no etc, etc. Yeah, it's really... OK, I'll give you a, I'll give you a clue. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing apocalyptic about it whatsoever. I think I might know it. Do I'm you? dull enough to know that. Hydraulic red legs. legs. <laughs> <laughs> it's one, it's something to do with hydraulic... I think it's the date. <laughs> <laughs> <I think. laughs> <laughs> if it's not about hydraulic legs, it would be very disappointing. Is it not the year? Have the, the Russians have said something about launching a moon mission, haven't they? They have, And yes. they, I think, have said that is the date. A mere... <laughs> 66 years after the Americans managed it. <laughs> yeah. so so what, land... that, what exactly is it? What's they're going to land a man on the moon. Okay. Absolutely right, they're well done, Hugh. You're absolutely oh, right. right. Yeah. Yeah.
The question I was looking for is when do the Russians intend to begin building a permanent lunar base? This is the announcement by Russian space agency Roscosmos. Cool name. Yeah. <laughs> that a manual space flight in 2025 will lead to an inhabited station on the moon. The station would provide a base from which to plan a trip to Mars by 2035. It would also be a convenient place to travel if your city was on hydraulic legs. <laughs> <laughs> but it would be better than a British space mission. Let's face it, it's always weird when you compare the two. You know, we had the, the Americans have just had a, a Mars mission, haven't they? And, you know, they always cause there's something exciting, like, you know, Endeavour, don't they, after the spirit of adventure. We called ours Beagle 2, because <laughs> we quite like small dogs. <laughs> to be fair, they probably called it Beagle 2, because they knew it would be smoking on re-entry. <laughs> There's that thing in space missions, isn't it, where they're always doing scientific experiments to see how things behave in weightless conditions? Do you know what? Who gives a shit <laughs> how they behave? They bob about, OK? <laughs> they bob about a bit. There was a scientific textbook, a, a treatise on the examination of objects' behaviour under zero gravity. Turn the page. They bob about a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Fair point, they do. Absolutely. Yeah, you're right, they do, actually. Yeah. Yeah. The whole thing, science, everything, space travel, it's all just sublimated sex drive. Everything, that's all anything is. Look at the space shuttle. Could that be more about sex? Yeah. This big giant thing when it's taken off, it comes back down as a little tiny thing. <laughs> it's flaking off it. Point. Well, I, well, I was wondering why it's always tile, for God's sake. It's always a problem with the tile. Why is it always falling off? You know what NASA should do before it goes up? Don't just check it, double check it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's going a long way. What about a double check? <laughs> you know? And also, a lot of those, those astronauts are always scientists, aren't they? Couldn't they take up one guy who's a roofer? <laughs> He said uh, there's a bit of a problem out there and he's going to be back next Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> the shuttle crew is uh, Dr Linus Pauling, yeah. Professor of Statistics, and Terry. <laughs> hey, there we go. They do get up some rubbish in space, though, don't they? The last American thing <laughs> is that they sent a probe, didn't they, the size of a washing machine into a comet. And you think, well, what is the point of that? And then you think, well, it would be better than the British would manage they would just go a bit cut price and send in a washing machine from Comet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're going to be hit by a Comet soon, aren't we? No. I, I, I think we, let's not panic people at home by uh, <laughs> starting, starting yeah. a discussion with we're Friends. going to be hit by a Comet. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I sensationalised the story. You did rather. Uh, yes, there is an asteroid. Have you ever heard about this asteroid? Yeah. 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 It's, it's gonna... another huge disappointment of them going, oh, we're going to, the world's going to end, and yet again, it doesn't end. I'm fed up with that. I'm fed up with it. Oh, I have Wednesday as my death day. Exactly. Wednesday. <laughs> Global warming yeah. very, very slowly. Nothing's ever happening. I wish they'd shut up about it. Look at Joe <laughs> taunting God. It's Bring it. Good. Bring yeah. it, Bill. Exactly. I don't do Is it. Is this the best up. you got? I don't yeah. think so. <laughs> We're going to be fine with the whole asteroid thing because our cities can just raise them. <laughs> oh. I'm not sure how they're going to manage oh, that. But, uh, that would be fantastic. Just them shooting down and just like doing a little concentrated sleep. power. And, and, you know. Apparently, this asteroid it's going to be great, though, isn't it? Because remember in the tsunami, the, all the animals ran inland because they knew something was up with the tsunami. Mm. So imagine what's going to happen if the whole Earth is going to get hit by a massive asteroid. We'd just be going. Has anyone else noticed that monkeys have started smoking? <laughs> <laughs> if, if the asteroid does land on Earth, right, it'll create a crater three miles wide, they said, and all communications in the near area will be completely kaput. Now, I don't know if any of you are on T-Mobile, <laughs> but as far as I'm concerned, an asteroid must be landing on Earth pretty much every day. <laughs> it's not even the biggest worry, is it? Because the, the other thing that we're meant to worry about a lot is the uh, super volcano under uh, Yellowstone National Park. You heard of that? It's the whole of... Uh, Yellowstone National Park is a vast volcano and if it goes up, which they are expecting it to, we all die. So the best you can hope oh. for okay, is it an asteroid. Oh, yeah. 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 It was a I program. Well, thank you for Apparently you're trying to just pour water on these apocalyptic facts. <laughs> <laughs> but you say which they're expecting it to. Does make it sound like well, there's a man with a clipboard ready to tick at any stage. <laughs> the best you can hope for is that the asteroid arrives the same day and goes into the hole and plugs it. <laughs> At the end of that round, the points go to Frankie Hugh and Mark. <laughs> now we come to our final quickfire round called Scenes We'd Like to See. This is for everyone, so if you could make your way over to the performance area. 
I call it ideas for scenarios. We'd love to see in the performers come in with their suggestions. Okay, here we go. The first subject is unlikely small ads. Erectile problems. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> DVD of Lost. <laughs> Want to earn pounds, pounds, pounds? Yes, three pounds. <laughs> Would you like no strings attached sex? Contact my whore of an ex wife. <laughs> <laughs> Worried about hair loss? You bald bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Dog available to good home. Free prawn crackers with every delivery. <laughs> Want to earn money at home? Become a prostitute. It's easy. Problems with your short-term memory? Can't remember what you've just read. Problems with your short-term memory? <laughs> Room to let. No one has died in it. No one. <laughs> <laughs> Wanted. One Spice Girls ticket and one gun. <laughs> Bored. Lonely. Depressed. Meet like-minded people at salsa dancing. <laughs> the next topic is excerpts from DVDs I wouldn't sell. My name is Hannibal Lecter. I'm a vegan. <laughs> I'm afraid the only thing you're going to be fighting for some time, Bond, is HIV. Welcome to Antiques Roadshow, too hot for TV. <laughs> From the makers of Alien vs. Predator, Alien vs. Pingu. <laughs> From the makers of Snakes on a Plane, Mice on a Tube. <laughs> Here's looking at you, kid. Is why I'm in a Cambodian jail. <laughs> Three love. I'm Anne Widdicombe, and this is naked table tennis. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Frodo, you're hurting me. <laughs> when I said you should destroy the ring. <laughs> Frankie, Hugh and Mark. That's the end of the show. This week's winners are Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis and Mark Watson. <laughs> but commiserations to Andy Parsons, Joe Caulfield and Russell Howard. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Good night. Stay with us on BBC Two. Steve Coogan is Tommy Saxondale next, being belligerent on behalf of squatters. And have you played Number Wang yet? Join in with Mitchell and Webb at 10. Thursday night comedy from BBC Two.